And so when, and when we take on too much, it's important to know that it does not just affect you. Okay, sometimes we think we're taking all this on and we're carrying the load, and especially I think as a wife and as a mother, we actually think that we're taking the brunt of the load. We actually think we're taking it off of our kids and we're taking it off of our husband and we're carrying this load. But you know what, sometimes we add when we take things away from our husband and our kids, we add worry and stress and anxiety and a bad attitude. (laughs) And then that bad attitude is what they have to carry. That's the load that you're giving them. And so a lot of times we may feel like we're carrying the brunt. Oh, we're not, we're taking it on so they don't have to take it on. We're taking it on, but you know what? Then they're not getting the best of you. They're not getting the best of you and what they need from you. And that can apply, you know, obviously I'm not married, I'm single. Woo, woo. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> all the single ladies, all the, no, okay. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we, we also have people who rely on us. We have people who are affected by us when we lead on teams. Um, you know, when you're pushing and you're driving too hard and you're, you know, not allowing people under you to take a rest or to take a Sabbath and you're constantly texting or you're constantly asking more of them or, or you're, you're taking on more and so that causes them to take on more. Um, you're affecting other people as well. And also with schedule management. So when any time that you take on a new thing, let's say, let's say I, I talk to one of you and I ask you to be a leader for sisterhood and it's going to entail certain things. Okay, if you just say yes without consulting your husband or consulting the people that that's going to affect, you're taking on additional burden and that's going to limit your time. They're going to have to actually take up the slack. And so anytime you say yes to something, and I loved what Pastor Jimmy Evans talked about this weekend because he was talking about Adam and Eve and how Adam and God were right there whenever the devil was tempting Eve, but she didn't turn and ask, did she? She didn't ask, Adam, what do you think? Adam, do you think I should eat this fruit? She didn't ask. And so when you don't ask, you're not giving them the opportunity to to step in and say, you know what, I think you should. Or you know what, I think you're taking on too much. And be honest. And if your husband says no, that's a no, ladies. Okay? And don't try to manipulate the situation. We all know that women can be very good manipulators. (laughs) Hello. Don't try to manipulate it. Honor his request. Because he's going to be the one who feels the burden of it, and he is the spiritual head of the home. And so we have to allow him to make that decision. And again, a lot easier said than done. I'm not married, okay? I know. Uh, Y'all are like, you don't know what it's like. Um, My bad, my bad. I'm just trying. Um, But that's biblical, okay? God said it, not me. I'm just saying. Just the the messenger. Don't shoot me. Uh, (laughs) But you have to listen to him as the spiritual head of the home and submit that to him and allow him to make that decision. And if the decision is a no, you have to honor that. Okay. Amen. Okay. Like three people. All right. So (laughs) it's all good. It's all good. So your schedule management and your attitude when you take on too much, that's what's affected. That affects others. When you do take on too much, other people are going to, are going to feel the the brunt of that. And so what are some Sabbath stealers that, um, that come into play when we're talking about our yoke, our burden. So our, the Sabbath stealers that come into play, the first one is ambition and overdrive. Ambition and overdrive. Now, ambition, I looked up the definition, it basically is a strong desire to do or to achieve something, typically requiring determination and hard work. It's another definition, desire and determination to achieve success. So ambition is basically, it's this desire, it's this, it's this desire and determination to, to be successful, to be somebody, to, to accomplish a goal. And um, again, that's not always negative. Ambition in and of itself is not negative. But what you need to ask yourself, is this ambition God-given or man-driven? Is the ambition that you have God-given or is it man-driven? And so sometimes we think we, ha- we have this goal, we have this thing that we want to meet, but that was never something that God put in us. It's something that we put on ourselves because we wanted to meet that goal, because we wanted the recognition, because we wanted the accolades, because we thought that that would be the best thing, the best next step. And so we've got to, you have to surrender. That's why do nothing out of selfish ambition. It says that in the Bible. Nothing should be done out of selfish ambition. So it should never be done because you want it to be done. Just like, for example, with with this platform, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, I'm going to get you to speak at, at such and such or whatever. I'm like, did you pray about that? Because I don't want to speak up there if that's not from God. (laughs) Because I'm going to say something crazy. (laughs) And so you want to know that when you're elevated to a position, if you're given a platform or if you're given this level of success, so to speak, 
you better have, have the character to sustain that. You better be ready to sustain that and be in that position because if you're not ready, you will fall flat on your face. And it's a lot harder to recover once you've fallen than to just take the time to prepare in the first place. And so that's why don't open doors for yourself. Don't push through doors yourself. Wait on what God has for you. You may think you're ready, but God knows when you're ready. God knows when it's time. And so wait on him for when he opens the door. Thanks. That's God. <laughs> I always say the good stuff is God and the ridiculous stuff is me. So you can always know how to filter that stuff through. Or it's Pastor Carrie. The good stuff is God or Pastor Carrie. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't confuse adrenaline with anointing. This is an interesting one. So this has to do with ambition. You know, sometimes we think, oh, this gives us adrenaline or this, this kind of gives me a rush. And so I must be anointed to do this. Okay. You know what else gives adrenaline? Stealing a car, you know, shoplifting. Is that, is that the anointing of God on your life? No. <laughs> Just because you get excited when you do something and you get adrenaline and it, it gives you this rush or whatever does not mean it's the anointing of God. Don't confuse adrenaline with God's anointing, okay? Don't confuse, you know, the rush with the Holy Spirit, okay? Learn how to discern when it really is God-given and when it's just man-driven, even when it's coming from within you, even when you think, oh, this really pumps me up when I do this, or this really, I really get really excited whenever I do this. Um, you know, for example, speaking actually does it gives me adrenaline. Afterwards, I'm like pumped up and I'm like excited, you know, and I just poured out everything God put in me and I feel really good. And, um, you know, it, it does, get, does give me the sense of adrenaline. But actually, when, whenever talking about that as well, um, just because something gives you a sense of adrenaline and it may be God's anointing on you for that gifting for that, don't take every opportunity that comes your way. Just because you know you're gifted for it, you know you have the anointing for it, does not mean that every time I'm asked to speak, I need to say yes, 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 yes. And I'll be honest with you guys, I think it was like maybe two years ago, it was in the spring of one year, and I can't remember exactly which year it was, they all kind of run together. But it was in the spring of one year, and I was asked to speak, like I spoke down in Hardy, Hardy campus, woo woo, shout out. Okay, I spoke down in Hardy, and then I had another opportunity, I think probably Sisterhood Mornings, and I was speaking at another place, place and like I got these opportunities and in my mind I'm thinking okay my calendar's filling up but I'm thinking speaking fills me back up right it's like this is a God thing this is my anointing this fills me back up but how many of you know we actually have four tanks and these four tanks can each get drained in their own way we have four different tanks mental emotional spiritual and physical four tanks that we each have mental emotional spiritual and physical. And actually, you may not have realized it, but last week when Pastor Kerry was going through the Sabbath message, each one of the points actually lined up with those four tanks. When we do take a Sabbath and take that time to rest, each one of those tanks has an opportunity to replenish. Our mental and emotional is tied to our soul. Our spiritual obviously is tied to our spirit and our physical is tied to our bodies. And so when we take that Sabbath, it gives us a chance to rest. Now, I said all that to say when it comes to ambition, yes, when I speak, it, it, it um, gives me this rush. It gives me the sense of adrenaline, but you know what? It does drain my mind. <laughs> it does drain my body when you push yourself like that. It drains your spirit to pour all that out. It drains your emotions. And so you do get drained. And so just because in some ways it fills you back up, in some ways it depletes you. So you have to be aware just because it is, it may seem like a filler to you, but that may mean may not mean that that's considered rest or that's considered something that you should add into your schedule so willingly and so freely because it does take things out of you as well. So don't take every opportunity that comes your way. Pray about it and present it to God and present it if you're married to your husband or present it to whoever is gonna, it's gonna affect in your life, any relationships that you have that that opportunity is going to, is going to affect.